My name's Maggie. I'm the daughter of Hetty Bower, and I'm back in Cable Street, where I marched with Mum at the age she was of 106, on the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Cable Street in 2011. Well, looking this way, this was a real victory for us. Yes. Hooray. Hooray. And again. Going on, I hope not hate the people who really were responsible for kicking the BMP out of marking. I'm uh, taking a picture of them in front of the, the Cable Street mural there to celebrate the 75th anniversary of that great demonstration where we defeated the fascists. Mum was always aware of dates and anniversaries of important times. If there was something that she could be involved in that was going to draw attention to and remind people of anything involved in opposing fascism, campaigning for peace, she would want to take part. She would be there. Are you really 106? Tomorrow! Tomorrow! Tomorrow. <laughs> she took part in the demonstration in memory of the original Battle of Cable Street in 1936 when she and my dad, Reg Bauer, were manning the barricades, the second row of barricades against the proposed march of the fascists. They were involved because they lived locally and just about, as I understand it, everybody who lived in the East End, not only the Jews, all the working people of the area, uh, people from the Docklands came in to take part and participate to ensure that uh, the fascists did not hold their demonstration. The message of Cable Street. Fascism thrives on the politics of hate and fear and division. It can only be defeated through the politics of hope and unity. She remembers seeing Sir Oswald Mosley walking along beside the chief of police who had a pair of black leather gloves in his hand and was slapping them on his wrist as they were walking and talking together as close friends, it appeared. I've been a campaigner for peace ever since World War I, when I saw what killing could do to human beings. And I think then I began to realize that we were not civilized until we stopped killing each other. And what a debt we owe to these people, these giants. My mother had a very strong social conscience from a very early age. She was terribly moved by the plight of the soldiers returning from the First World War, the wounded in the first few months after the beginning of the First World War. Uh, it turned her into a lifelong anti-war activist. And marrying my father, who also had an enormous sense of the need for social justice and need to do something about it. They supported each other. So can you take a question, Mother? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Depends <laughs> how my hearing is. What do you remember of the original march in the East End of that era? Oh. Tremendous pride that we managed that they did not pass because everything was set to help them uh, do what they wanted, which was not let the democratic forces prevail. And we did stop them and democracy was up here. Mum's description of the police at the time was uh, particularly the mounted police 
that they would ride into the crowds, lashing out on all sides with their truncheons uh, and causing a lot of injury and damage, very, very uh, rough. And it contrasted with an encounter she had in a later demonstration, a peace demonstration, with this six foot two policeman bent down over my four foot eight mother and said, and I don't want any trouble from you. And the pleasantness, the humour was such a contrast to the treatment that they'd received at the police, uh, at the hands of the police or the, the horses' hooves of the police at Cable Street. Throughout the time she was in hospital, her legs didn't stop moving. They were marching up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, as if she was exercising them for ready for when she came out of hospital and would carry on uh, campaigning and marching. And her very last words in hospital, very emphatic, as if she was trying to persuade the rest of the people in the ward, ban the bomb forevermore, ban the bomb forevermore. Those were her last words.